Are you tired of sifting through a mountain of leads, unsure which ones are truly worth your time and attention? In today's video, I'll reveal a game-changing strategy to automate your lead qualification right within HubSpot. So say goodbye to manual guesswork and hello to a smarter, more efficient way to identify and prioritize your leads. The first thing you need to do is to define the lead qualification criteria and build your form. So you need to determine the characteristics, actions, or behaviors that indicate a lead's potential interest or readiness to purchase with your company. This may include factors like job title, industry, website visits, email opens, form submissions, or any other relevant data. You need to build this qualification criteria right within the form that people will submit on your site. This is the best way to capture the information and see right away if they're a good fit for your business. So you may be wondering what qualification criteria would I even put in here? This is where you need to take stock of your sales process and understand those two or three qualifying questions that you need to understand when talking with a prospect. This is where you should review call notes or call recordings and see what are those two or three questions that you're asking to see if you're even a good fit to be working with that person. Then you can put that information right within your form so then you are qualifying these leads upfront and only giving your salespeople leads that you actually want to work with. So here I'm gonna jump into HubSpot and show you some best practices for setting up your form and how to best set up qualification criteria in your lead form. The first thing I wanna talk about here is this email field. You're gonna to wanna to capture email in every single one of your lead forms. And there's one thing in HubSpot that you want to make sure is toggled on so you ensure that you're only getting higher quality leads. And so if you click on the email field, you'll see right down here, block free email providers. Make sure this is checked. This way you are not letting anyone submit the form if they put in AOL, Hotmail, Yahoo, Gmail, or any of the other free email service providers. This way you're only requiring people to put in their business emails because at the end of the day, you are trying to start a business relationship with this person. This may result in lower conversions for you, but it should increase the quality of the conversions that you do receive so your sales team is only focusing on the people that actually matter. So here you can also include first name, last name, or company name. For company name, there's one HubSpot specific thing that you should be aware of. There are two company name properties. One is on the contact level and the other one is on the company level. Make sure you include the company level in here. This way it'll ensure that a company record is created and associated with the specific contact that is filling out the form. This becomes really important as you start to gather more and more leads that may even be from the same company. So this way everyone was, is tied under the same company umbrella and you can keep everything all in one place. So here you can see your monthly revenue field. This would be an example of qualifying criteria. So if my business only works with companies that are doing more than $10,000 worth of revenue per month, then I wanna make sure that I'm quantifying that and giving the prospect an option to enter when they're submitting the form. So here, if I go down to the form options, you can see here I have less than 10,000 and then other options between 10 and 100,000 or more a month. So if someone submits less than 10,000, I know right off the bat that they are not qualified to work with my business. So I can route them separately if they do this. I could bypass sales so they never have to see this person. There's a lot of things you can do here if someone becomes disqualified at the form level. But now I know that if they submit any of these other three options, that I could route them to the proper person so they can see what other information they submitted and then follow up accordingly. Hey, real quick, if your business uses HubSpot and you have no idea what you're doing, I'll manage and streamline your HubSpot to get you clean data, increase conversions, and save your team 20 plus hours per week. If that's something that interests you, click the first link in the description. All right. Back to the video. The second thing you need to do is to set up lead scoring. So what lead scoring basically is, is it assigns point values to different actions or attributes that indicate lead quality. For example, a lead who fills out a form may receive more points than someone who only just visits your website. Lead scoring helps prioritize your leads for your sales teams based on their engagement level and it enables you to focus on those with the highest scores. You don't want your salespeople to be prioritizing inbound leads that haven't really been that engaged with you. you want them to prioritize the warmest leads, the ones who have submitted a form, visited a few website pages, opened marketing emails, and so on. So let me show you how to set that up within HubSpot. So here you're going to go um, into settings and then properties and then contact properties. And once you're in contact properties, you're just going to type HubSpot and you'll see HubSpot score. This is the same thing as lead score. It's just HubSpot's version. Click edit. 
And then here you'll see two columns, positive and negative. Positive adds points and negative removes points from the HubSpot score. I personally like to use a 100 point lead scoring system just because it's really easy for everyone to understand and it's much easier to allocate points to different activities, especially as you expand this out. I always recommend people to start small and simple when it comes to lead scoring. And then as you further analyze your leads more and more, you can understand what are those behaviors that are actually driving really good contacts and then add them into your lead scoring calculation and weigh them appropriately. So here you can see on the left hand side, if someone fills out a lead form, I'm giving them 100 points right off the bat. They have done the action that I need them to do in order to reach that next level of qualification. Next is assigning 10 points, five points, 15 points, whatever it is, to their actual website behavior. So if they view a website page that has pricing or product in it, that may indicate a higher level of intent or readiness to buy. The next thing you can do here is assess their overall engagement through your website, for example. So here we can say if they have more than two page views, then I'm gonna assign them 20 points or 10 points or whatever it is. This way I know that if they are allocated this amount of points, that they are much more familiar with the website because they've clicked around and there is a potential readiness to buy or at least some deeper level of intent there. Because again, they're more familiar with the business and they've clicked around and perhaps explored how they would wanna work with us. Next thing here is completely optional, um, but it, especially if you're not requiring business email in your forms, this is important. You may deal with a lot of personal emails in your business. And in that case, you may wanna factor something like this into your lead scoring. So if they don't give me an email that has Gmail or Yahoo or AOL or anything like that, I'm going to give them additional points because that person has given me their business email and it indicates, again, a level of intent that they wanna start a business relationship and begin that sales process. The only thing I have in here in the negative column right now is similar to if you prefer or have personal emails as part of your business. Again, if they give you a business email that is indicating a higher level of intent than if they give you a personal email. So I'm going to deduct points if they give me a personal email because they're just not as qualified or warm as someone who may give me their business email. So I don't want my sales team to be prioritizing them. Remember that lead scoring is all about sales prioritization. So your sales team should be sorting their lists for leads in HubSpot by HubSpot score so they can initially interact or follow up with the people that are the warmest. The third and final thing you need to do here is to notify and route your qualified leads. So once a lead reaches a certain threshold or meets specific criteria, you could automate notifications to your sales team or route the lead directly to a sales representative for immediate follow-up. This ensures that your sales team focuses their efforts on leads that have a higher likelihood of conversion. And remember, that first half hour, one hour, is very important in order to get a follow-up from that lead. So you wanna make sure you're pushing this information to sales as soon as possible. I will cover lead routing in much more detail in another video. That's all for this one. If you guys have any questions related to HubSpot, drop them in the comments below and I'll make sure to make a video about it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and make sure to subscribe.